Hello, it's Hi Show, a woman Christina Rivers Glick got arrested for masturbating in public in Georgia. I saw the body cam footage from July 2021. The video went viral. I saw a body cam footage of her on Inside Edition in the DC source. I'm going to talk about the footage, but I'm going to tell you my intentions of talking about this. When I searched her up because of the video of her masturbating at the beach and her allegedly killing herself, I was going to give my thoughts on the situation at the beach and explain that her killing herself didn't have anything to do with the video of her. But when I looked at her personal life and saw the details about her dying, I wanted to talk about more than that. I said that she allegedly killed herself because I don't believe it and think that she was killed. Not trying to start a conspiracy theory, I'm just going based off the facts of the case. The story surprised me, that's why I didn't talk about this. The details about this case were already public. I'm just giving my opinion. By me talking about this, I'm bringing awareness to what happened to her. This is a sad story. Instead of just talking about what happened when she got arrested and died eight months later, I'm going to also give details about her life so you can know who she was as a person. My sources that I use are Daily Mail and The Smoking Gun. If you want to look at the articles that I use for my video, go on their websites. I will show the articles in this video. She was married before, but she got divorced in 2015. She had two sons. One of them was 19 and the other one was 15. According to her family, the incident at the beach didn't cause her to kill herself because she was addicted to alcohol and drugs. She graduated from a university with a bachelor's degree. She was a realtor. Due to her being addicted to drugs and alcohol and going on a downward spiral, she was cut off by her family. Before she got arrested for masturbating in public in 2021, she was a fugitive because she stole a car in 2018. In 2018, she got cited for being drunk in public. In 2017, she was sued for not paying rent, hurting property, and stealing property. The police tried to serve her, but they couldn't because she was using ali alias Glick Rebels, Snail. In July 2018, a court ruled for her and her boyfriend to pay $11,051.71. The woman went back to using her name, Rebels Glick. In January 2019, Harmony Town Homeowners Association sued her for breaching her contract, but the police couldn't find her, so the case went away. Now that I talked about who she is, I'm going to talk about the footage of her getting arrested by the police for masturbating at the beach. To give more details about the case, I looked at Daily Mail. I looked at a Daily Mail article about her getting arrested from August who August 28, 2021. Also looked at an article from the Smoking Gun to see the police report about the incident. At the time, Christina was 34 years old. The police told her that someone saw her do something bad on the beach at Tybee Island. He said that the police got multiple cars about her. The woman was shot. She did not do anything bad on the beach. He told her that a couple of people saw her masturbating on the beach. A family saw her do it. When the police asked her to look through her bag, she admitted that she had a vibrator. She said that she put the vibrator in her vagina, covered it with a towel so nobody can see her masturbate with it. She said that she was stressed. The officer told her that a family saw it and they had kids. She said that nobody saw her do it. She thought that she was going to get a ticket for doing it, but she got arrested for doing it. She probably didn't know about indecent, indecent exposure being a crime. According to the police report from the smoking gun, she got arrested for disorderly conduct and indecent exposure. The police found the vibrator in her backpack she got released from jail because of a subpoena, but I don't know what the subpoena was. When she was getting booked, she apologized for masturbating in public. She said that it took her 20 seconds to have an orgasm. And decent exposure is a misdemeanor, but she was facing 12 months in jail for masturbating in public. The woman, Sarah K. Moss, who reported the crime, said that while she was at the beach where her family, a white woman walked by her tent several times. The woman stopped by their tent took out a white towel and sat on it. After that, she saw the woman unzip her backpack and pull out a vibrator. She started masturbating with a vibrator and heard her moaning. After five minutes, the woman got her stuff and left. Then she told the police that the woman could have went to the deck restaurant.
The woman also said that she recorded a video of what happened. She showed the police officer the video. The officer said that he saw a woman who was wearing a green bikini take out the white towel and sit on it. She opened up her backpack and pulled out an object. The woman spread her legs and put her hands between her legs. This happened for a few seconds. The woman saw when she looked to the right side. The woman didn't do anything else when the video ended. According to the police, the object was unknown, but you could assume that it was a vibrator. The woman said her mom who reported the crime shouldn't have lied about her masturbating for five minutes when it was only a few seconds according to what the police officer saw in the video. The woman, Christina, was honest when she said it lasted for like 20 seconds. Of course, it may have been shorter than that, but that's closer to her doing it than five minutes. From looking at the police report, the woman, Sarah, said that she saw her masturbate, but she didn't say that anybody else in her family saw her masturbate. I bring this up because an officer told Christina that two police, I mean two people in a family saw her masturbate, although an officer didn't say that Sarah said that in the police report. The officer said that the object that Christina had in the field was unknown. The officer didn't say that he heard Christina moan in the video, but Sarah said that she did. So I wonder if Sarah lied about her doing that. I wonder if the police lied to Christina about them getting multiple calls about her masturbating because I didn't see anything about it in the police report. Not saying that it's true, but it's possible. From what it seems like, the police only spoke to one witness, not multiple witnesses. So Christina probably would beat this case if she stayed silent. Christina was wrong for what she did and she should have masturbated at home. So I understand why she went to jail for masturbating in public. She didn't think that she was going to get caught, but she got caught. So she had to face the consequences of her actions. It seemed like Christina had a promising future by being a real estate agent, but she got addicted to drugs and alcohol. The crimes that she committed were small things. That's why they're, cons that's why they're considered misdemeanors. She was a misguided person. She seemed like a good person, but she was going down a bad path. Maybe I'm wrong about her being a good person, but she hasn't done anything. She hasn't done something evil to the point where I would think that she's a bad person. When she masturbated, she stopped when she looked to the right side, which shows that she cared about not trying to get caught. If she would have kept masturbating when she thought that somebody saw her or was going to see her, that would have been a different story. She was honest and admitted to masturbating. She also apologized for doing it. She shouldn't have talked to the police and told them that she did it because they can use what she said against her. Eight months later, on March 31st, 2022, the woman killed herself and shot herself in her forehead with a gun. She was 35 at the time of her death. She was dead for 30 days before her body was discovered in an apartment that was in Hensfield, Georgia. Her body was found because she didn't pay rent and the landlord came in her home with her boyfriend, her friend, to check up on her tenant. She had her boyfriend and friend go in the home because there was a right to smell. They found her dead body. One of them called the police. The woman, Christina, had two cats at her home, but animal control didn't want to get them because they weren't hurt. According to the police, a pistol was found in the master bedroom bed. The woman got cremated, her ex-husband and their 15-year-old son didn't show up to the funeral. Here is something surprising. Some people who knew her and knew information about death think that she actually got killed by her boyfriend. They think that this happened after she got into a heated argument with him. The strange thing is that in pictures from the crime scene, there were bloody fingerprints on the wall. Not going to show the pictures, you can find them on Daily Mail. One of the witnesses was one of the men who found her body. It's unclear if it was the landlord's friend or boyfriend. I think it was the boyfriend. Also, a neighbor from downstairs in the apartment, a witness, he said that a man who they think was her boyfriend was with her the night that she got killed. Him and his wife heard the man and Christina fight. They saw the man's car that night and he came over Christina's home all the time. But after that situation, he didn't see him again. The landlord's boyfriend said that the woman Christina paid her rent on time, which shows that she got better at paying her rent and she was changing for a better, hopefully. 
She wasn't paying her rent on time at first, but she started paying it on time. The man trained in the military before. He thinks that she was trying to get to a phone on the front door when she was dying. The gunshot wasn't fatal. He thinks that she got killed because when someone shoot themselves in the head, they just fall down and don't move around a lot. Here's something else surprising about the situation. The landlady asked the police to do a welfare check on her tenant two weeks before the landlady, her boyfriend, and friend checked up on Christina and found her body. The Hendersfield police came to her apartment on March 19th, but they didn't try to make contact with her. The police commander of Hendersfield, Georgia, William uh, Brillander, I forgot how you say it, William uh, Brillander, I think that's how you say it, admitted that it was a normal suicide. He said that he doesn't know she meant to shoot herself. He thinks that she killed herself, but he's arguing about whether it was intentional or not. There was a lot of blood in the home. There was blood in the bathroom, living room, and bedroom. Another thing that surprised him is that the police didn't test. They didn't test to see if there were any fingerprints on the gun because they believed that nobody else was there. Now that I talked about everything that I can about her arrest, her life, and her death, I'm going to get my thoughts on this situation. At first, she wasn't paying rent, like I said, but when she moved to the apartment where she got killed, she was paying her rent on time, so that was good. I wonder why her ex-husband, 15-year-old son, didn't show up to her funeral. Did she treat her son badly to the point where he didn't want to show up? Did she treat her husband badly? Did she divorce her husband or did he divorce her? Maybe she had a bad relationship with her son and father. I don't like the way that the Hennessyville police handled her case, especially the police commander. The police were negligent. When the landlady had the police do a welfare check on her, they should have tried to make contact with her, but they didn't. They probably knocked on the door, so when she didn't answer, they left. They didn't even do a follow-up. They saw her history. They probably thought that she moved out of her home. But that's not an excuse for them to not have probable cause to open the door. They could have gotten the landlady to open the door for them when they heard no answer instead of just leaving. If they would have done this, they would have found her body sooner. The landlady, Felicity Rollins, asked the police to do a welfare check. The police did a welfare check on March 19, 2022. But the autopsy said that she died on March 31, 2022. This part confuses me. Maybe that's the day that she was pronounced dead, but for her to die on that day doesn't make sense because the landlord checked on her two weeks later. They didn't test fingerprints on the gun to make sure that it didn't belong to anybody else besides her. Instead of the police commander doing his job, he thought that he was confident about her not getting killed. So he didn't even bother to see if he was right. As you heard him say, the last shot wasn't fatal, so she committed suicide. Why was there blood in different parts of the house and said that there had been blood in one place? If it's true that the neighbor and his wife saw the boyfriend's car outside the night that Christina was killed, they heard Christina and her boyfriend arguing, and his car wasn't there the next day, that seems like he's guilty of killing her. People can stage suicides. The police most likely didn't even look at the boyfriend as a person of interest. They looked at Christina's criminal history, but they probably didn't look at his criminal history. Personally, I think that she got killed. The police not even bothering to make contact with her when they did a welfare check shows that they didn't do a good job at handling her case. Even if I'm wrong, even if I'm wrong about her boyfriend killing her with a gun, he could have had something to do with her dying. He could have checked on her to see if she was okay.